Hey everybody, I'm Chris, this is B is for Build. In the last seven years, I have bought a ton of cars, ranging all the way from cheap $500 cars up to six figure cars and everything in between. And in today's episode, I'm gonna teach you guys how you can buy a cheap car without getting scammed. We're gonna go over three different methods of getting a very inexpensive car. We're talking about the two to $4,000 price range that's gonna be reliable, maybe even look nice, get you around town and get the job done on the cheap without getting scammed. Stay tuned. So we're gonna go through my top three strategies for buying a used car, how I would tell a friend, a neighbor, my family to go do it. We're gonna start in the private party sales area, we're gonna move over into auction, salvage auction, and then we're gonna end in buying new. All for the price range of about two to $4,000. Before we get down to work, I want to take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Simply Safe. If you guys don't already know what Simply Safe is, it is the simplest and easiest to install and understand home security system that I've ever seen in my life. I've installed them in everything from this shop to our old shop to my last house and my new house, and it works amazingly. My personal home security story started a while back when one day I walked outside to see all my cars out on blocks. All the wheels had been stolen off my cars and they were left on cinder blocks in front of my house and it was a big bummer. And after that, I got Simply Safe installed in my house and thankfully nothing has ever happened ever since. And here at the shop, we got it too. Let me show you around. We have multiple of these indoor outdoor HD cameras. They have a huge wide viewing angle and they can see everything that happens in the shop. The blue light means it's recording us right now. We've got our keypad near our entryway here and when we arm the system, let's tell it we're here. Our base station over here gets this nice blue glow letting us know that the system is armed. We also have five different door sensors sensors here monitoring all the different doors in the shop and things like our glass break sensor if it hears any glass breaking it's going to go off and a motion sensor too and this hd camera here lets me know who walks in the front door when and it's all super easy to monitor through their app so i can see all my different cameras i can see the timeline of event and i can even arm and disarm my system all through the app and they have a professional 24 7 monitoring service in case you don't happen to be around your app so guys if you're ready to up your home security game check out the link in the top of the description you can save 20 percent on your simply safe system when you sign up for the interactive monitoring plan and you'll get your first months free. Just visit simplysafe.com slash BS for build or click the link at the top of the description. It's also on the screen right here. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash BS for build. Huge thanks to them for sponsoring this episode. It's a great product. I cannot recommend it enough. Let's get down to work. So let's jump into buying private party. What do I mean by buying private party? I mean finding a person that is selling their car. I do not mean a dealership, not a big fancy dealership, and not a cheap used car dealership. 7,000, 7,000, 11,000, 18,000. If you find yourself here, you're in the wrong place. I'd never recommend to anybody to buy a used car from a used car dealership, especially when you're looking for one that is cheap. So let's talk about private party sales. First place I would go, Craigslist. Jump on Craigslist, type in the type of car you want, type in your price range, click search by titles only. And again, if it looks like it's a dealership, eh, that's not what we're looking for. Other places that I think are also really good to reach those private party sales are eBay Motors, and Facebook Marketplace. There may be a few more, but any of them are all gonna essentially be the same. You're trying to reach the person that had the car for a long time. Let me show you an example of something I've been shopping for. I've been in the market for a midsize SUV on the luxury side of a midsize SUV for very cheap. I found what I think is a really, really good example of what you should be looking for. Ta-da, it's a cheap BMW X3. This is a cool SUV, midsize SUV, fits the bill for what we're looking for. Let me tell you why I think it's a good candidate. In the first sentence of the description, we are selling our BMW X3. It's not a dealership, all the pictures are of this BMW at their home. In the description as well, it indicates that they have owned it for a few years, which that's always a good thing. The longer they've owned the car, the better. And then here's the number one way that we're gonna be able to drive down the price. If you wanna get a really cheap car, my advice is be willing to put in some elbow grease. This person is motivated to sell their car because the catalytic converters got stolen. That's where the elbow grease comes in. I have a friend that literally has a flat tire and then now they're motivated to sell their car because they're too lazy to go get it fixed. Look for small problems that maybe you understand how to fix, you know how to fix, and you can put in a little bit of elbow grease and you can use that to drive the price down. This vehicle is listed at $3,500. I guarantee somebody will get it for much, much cheaper. Who's gonna buy a car with missing cats? other than us, elbow grease people. Anyways, you're looking for something that motivated the seller to sell the vehicle, be it old age, be it they replaced their vehicle, anything like that, you wanna find a motivated seller, and we'll talk about seller profiling in a second. So, the cats, jump onto eBay Motors, figure out how much new cats cost, 
Also call around, figure out how much labor costs, calculate that into your price, use that to drive down their asking price. Right now they're asking $3,500. I bet you if I show up with $2,500 cash, they're gonna sell this vehicle to me. So let's talk about seller profiling really quickly. The perfect seller would be somebody from a median to high income range that bought the vehicle brand new, especially if you're looking for maybe a used uh, luxury car, bought the vehicle brand new, owned it for 10 to 15 years, and now it's time to sell it. Reason being, they're gonna have maintained it very well. It was probably under warranty for the first 100,000 miles. Um, also, they lose track of the value of the car. It was paid off five years ago, 10 years ago. Most loans don't go more than five years. So that car's been paid off for a long time and they think, a lot of people think honestly, after they've had a car for 10 to 15 years and it's worked for 10 to 15 years, that it is worthless when they're done. That's why a lot of cars get donated. That's why they just do trade-ins for the dealership and the dealership gives them a tiny little bit amount of money. You're there to tell them that, hey, your car is still worth money, but it's not worth that much money and I'm gonna take it off of your hands. And so getting these cars before they get traded into a dealership when they go buy a new one to replace it, it can be difficult. But sometimes situations like this, like, oh, catalytic converter's gone or a wheel fell off or muffler rusted through, some small thing that you think you can fix that is gonna motivate that seller to sell private party. You wanna jump in there, you wanna get their ear, you wanna to talk to them, you wanna buy their vehicle. Now not getting scammed is a huge part of this process. How do you not get scammed buying a private party used vehicle? How do you know the difference between this person that is probably an awesome seller versus a bad seller? You can't, honestly, you really can't. What I recommend to anybody buying private party is to get the vehicle inspected. So say, hey, I like your vehicle. I would like to test drive it. I'm gonna test drive it down to my mechanic. He's gonna have it for six, seven, eight hours, however long they need. And then I'll bring it back to you. And hey, I'll let you know what's wrong with it. If anything's wrong with it, then we could talk about buying it. Always get the vehicle inspected. Last time I did this was about five, 10 years ago, and it was like 75 bucks, not too expensive. If you're not a mechanic, you don't have a mechanic friend, too many things could be hiding from you. There's a lot of question marks on vehicles, no matter their age or what state they're in. You wanna reduce those amount of question marks, you wanna reduce your amount of gambling on this buy, you wanna go get it inspected by a mechanic. If the seller doesn't agree to get inspected by a mechanic, you don't wanna be buying from that person anyways. Lastly, me being a guy that literally started my career buying and fixing salvage cars, a lot of times salvage cars are listed for a lot cheaper. Problem is, is they tend to go through the market of just people buying cheap, so that's not our target seller. Although, salvage cars are not inherently bad. I've ran through so many salvage cars that should have never been salvaged before. If you take it to a good mechanic and they look through it and they say, this car is good, this car is good enough for you to use, I would trust that mechanic and even if it has a salvage title, if it's in your price range and it's what you want, I would buy it. Rule of thumb is a salvage car is worth 20% less than a clean title car. So that can help you judge your price range a little bit. All right, so that's how to buy private party. eBay Motors also has a really, really good benefit. They have a thing called VPP, Vehicle Purchase Protection. It actually covers you for a lot of different things that could be scams if you wanna buy a vehicle on eBay Motors and it shows up and it's not what you expected. Read through the fine print. Nothing I'm saying here is like legal or financial advice. So you are on your own. This is just my advice, but I know they do have this feature. It seems like a good thing on paper. I would say that is definitely something worth looking into if you're interested in buying on eBay Motors. The next strategy that I use for buying cheap used cars is buying salvage cars at auction. The two largest salvage car auction companies that I know about are Copart and IAAI. In my opinion, both of them have some pretty big internal problems as a company, which makes this a little bit higher risk, but it's also a lot higher reward. So I'd say this is more in the technical side. You need a little bit more knowledge about vehicles. In my opinion, you should probably have more knowledge about vehicles than the other way of buying. This is more for probably automotive enthusiasts, and this is gonna be highest on the elbow grease uh, scale. But with high elbow grease and higher risk, you can get much, much, much higher rewards. We're talking about buying cars for one tenth of the price than you would find on the used car market on average. So like I said, this is all about not getting scammed, not getting screwed. I'll tell you about how to do that once you're on the site. But I just said both those companies have problems. So how do you not get screwed from the companies? I buy using a broker. I use Auto Bidmaster. They're a company that's local here to Portland. I've gotten to meet those guys and I've used their company and they're really good people and they run a good company. So I have a lot of trust with them. And I extend that trust to you guys. I've advertised for them before. I think they're a good broker. Here's why I think it's important to use a broker and I wouldn't advise anybody to buy without using a broker. First off is licensing problems. Um, certain states need licenses to buy salvage auctions. Broker will get you around that. But more importantly, Broker is somebody that buys and sells a lot of cars and represents you. They buy and sell a ton of cars using these auction sites and they represent you. So it's all about your relationship with the broker and the broker's relationship with the company. If you are just you, like how I have just been me before and buy from these companies and something goes wrong, it's very, very hard to get them to fix your problem because 
in my opinion, I'm trying really hard not to get sued here, in my opinion, they have kind of overgrown their britches, they've overgrown their ability to take care of their customers, so sometimes when small customers uh, have problems, they fall through the cracks. I've had a problem where a vehicle was sold to me with a bum title, the title was no good, and a auction company did not take care of the problem uh, for over a year until I told them who I was and what YouTube channel I ran and then it was taken care of in a week. So that doesn't happen with a broker because a broker has more stake with them. They say, hey, we buy a thousand cars a year or more with you as a company. You need to make this right. We need to take care of our customer. That's the protection that I want for anybody that I advise to buy from an auction site. Once you're on the auction site, it feels like the wild west of cheap car sales going down every single day. Man, is it addicting, is it tempting? You wanna spend more money because every $100 more you spend can get you so much of a better car. It's a tough thing to navigate. I've made multiple videos on my channel about buying cars at auction. I highly advise searching around on YouTube. If there's enough desire for it, I will make an updated version of how I buy cars at auction. But I'm just gonna go through two big things. Uh, that I see as scams. So let's look at that X3 we were talking about earlier. This is a website I use a ton for research at auctions. It's called autoauctions.io. It is not free by the way though, uh, but you can actually see some information for free. And now I'm looking at sale data from both the big auction sites and how much these things sold for. 800, 700, 600, 1,000, 400, 900, 600, 1,900. So I'm going down the list. You can see that they're more than three times cheaper um, going this way. Keep in mind, that's the sale price. There's gonna be fees on top of that that are not small, and you can look up the fee charts for each auction site. I'm honestly a little bit surprised. I thought they'd sell for even cheaper. I bet if you were looking at maybe like an X5 or something like that, I mean, you should be around the $500 price range on an auction site like this. That's with just a little bit of elbow grease level of repairs needed. Not talking about sending it to the body shop for new paint or anything like that. Here's how you don't get scammed. It is worth it to look at autoauctions.io or another company similar. I think there are some free companies out there and look at the type of seller. Right here on my screen, it's showing us the type of seller. It says third party, third party, then it says insurance company. I always buy from the insurance company. I never buy from a third party. If you're buying from a third party, what that basically means is you're probably buying it from one of those crappy used car dealerships and it was too bad for them to sell there, so then they dumped it on the auction sites. It's like a double whammy of badness. I never, ever, ever buy from third party, only buy from insurance company. When it's sold from the insurance company, it means that the insurance company are the people that deemed it a salvage and then they took it from their possession straight to the auction. So the process should be, and usually is, something happened with the vehicle, it goes to a repair shop, repair shop assesses damages, says this thing's salvage, goes straight to the auction yard. So, good things to look for on these would be uh, vandalism is a good one that I've had a lot of luck with finding very cheap cars that were salvaged out for vandalism and then when I looked, the vandalism was next to nothing and the car was fantastic. Cars can flood for all sorts of reasons. The car could have gone completely underwater or the car could be completely fine. Rain through the sunroof, floods out a car. It can be good, but it's a high risk, high reward. Fender benders are also good. Look for a car that has just a dented front bumper, rear bumper, front fender, rear fender, dented door and get creative and put Thor's hammer in it. Anything like that, and then what I advise is for a quick fix to not break the budget, either finding the same color part on eBay, so say your bumper is broken, find the same color painted part that matches your vehicle on eBay, buy that, slap it on there, you got a perfectly good looking car. Or also there's a website called car-part.com and all the links to all these resources I'll try and put in the description. Car-part.com, you can search for tons of parts in your area and then again, I'm looking for the same color coat. So when we rebuilt Chelsea's Jeep, two bad doors, bought two doors that were the same color, then I didn't have to paint the car. You wanna avoid painting at all costs, it's really expensive. Another cool option is if you're a tuner like me or anything like that, just plan on wrapping the vehicle anyway so then you buy the vehicle, get all the multicolored parts you need and then wrap it up. So how do you not get screwed at auction? You use a broker, you don't buy third party sales, you only buy insurance company sales. And lastly, you either go see the vehicle in person to verify it's what you're looking for, or you uh, hire a service that'll go out there for you. Do not, do not, do not buy cars sight unseen like you see me do on the internet. I have been screwed so many times by showing up and finding that a car is so much worse than it looks in pictures. Pictures don't show enough detail, that's all I could say. It's not that anybody's trying to run a scam on me, it's that my own laziness or desire to get a good deal made me buy a car in California that I couldn't see because I'm here in Oregon and I should have gone and seen it in person first. Just did it with a $14,000 truck and that was only two miles away from me. I should have gone and seen it first, didn't do it. 
Always go and see it first or send somebody to do an inspection. I think inspections last time I checked were $100. When a vehicle is marked as runs and drives on the auction site, most of the auction site's rules are that just means it goes into gear, goes a few inches forward, goes into reverse, goes a few inches back. That's marked as runs and drives. Most cars with blown engines can do that too. I have jumped into cars at auction sites that have an engine that has already exploded and it was probably dangerous to be in it because it was a mid-engine car, but anyways. That wraps up buying used cars at auction. Now let's talk about the last one that is a very, very interesting field of buying vehicles right now, which is just buy a new car. We can't buy a new car for two to $4,000, but you can lease a new car for two to $4,000 in today's economy, which is 100% bizarre. Most of those cheap leases are gonna come on, in the form of electric vehicles, which I think is a double cool thing because then you're saving money on gas. So we're talking, we're on a budget here. I'm not, I'm not even gonna jump into the positives. Let's talk about how it's possible. Here is a list of current vehicles and manufacturers that are getting the federal tax kickback. If you're not in the United States, sorry. Uh, federal tax kickback and how much money. Most EVs or any plug-in EV is getting some sort of a kickback based on its battery pack, and most manufacturers are building it so it gets the full kickback of $7,500. If you have the money to buy a brand new one, good for you. That might be a really good idea right now because you're saving $7,500, and a lot of these cars MSRP is in the $30,000 range, so that might be a great idea, but we're talking cheap, right? So we only have two to $4,000. How do we get our hands on one? Well, because the federal government is giving these tax kickbacks, they give that to the manufacturer when they lease it because you don't technically own it. So like. I guess the manufacturer buys it from the manufacturer. Anyways, they take the money from the government and what they're doing is they are using that to drive down the lease prices of a lot of these EVs. If you buy it, you're the one that takes the tax rebate. If you lease it, you don't even have to worry about your taxes. Something like a Nissan Leaf. This is a brand new vehicle. Great safety specs, 150 mile range, lease price of 320 bucks a month with zero money down. So if you're on a budget, that's zero money down. Yes, that's over $6,400 over two years. So we're a little outside of our two to $4,000 range, but it requires no money starting right now. If you put your $3,000 down, that drives down the lease price to about 200 bucks a month. Whichever way you wanna do it, it ends up being pretty good. Benefits of this are, Leased cars, I believe, are all under warranty, right? So if anything goes wrong on that vehicle, it's the most reliable thing in the world because if anything goes wrong, they gotta take care of you and give you another car. At least, I'm pretty sure that's how leases work. Gotta be honest, I've never leased a car. And then again, it's an EV, so you're not paying for gas. The downside is you're paying that money and after two years, or if you do, a, if you wanna do a three-year lease or whatever, you, you know, you're back to square one, you don't have a car. Potentially, lease to own too could be another great option if you're, if you're happy with the car, after that amount of time, you could just say, hey, I'm gonna buy it from the dealership. Then you miss out on your tax credit, so it'd be better to buy it in the beginning. But it gets a little complicated. There's a lot of incentive to just buy it over leasing it. But what I'm trying to say is there are vehicles out there right now that have extremely low lease prices. So if you need to get to work tomorrow, you need something reliable to get back and forth to school or to work or whatever you're doing for the next two years. And you got that $6,000 available, that might be the safest, most reliable, and actually safest vehicle possibility. And on top of that, you're saving on gas. Downside is when the apocalypse comes, you will not make it out of the asteroid impact zone. So that wraps up my three strategies for buying cheap vehicles without getting scammed. This is the safest way that I would recommend to do it. If you're interested in how this plays out, I've bought two vehicles, luxury SUVs at auction that we're gonna road trip across the country and I'm gonna try, I've been emailing back and forth with the seller of that X3, I'm gonna try and buy that BMW X3 and include that as well and we're gonna be doing a road trip across the country in these vehicles to test them out and to see what is better, private party sale or auction and talk about everything in between as well as just testing the heck out of high mileage luxury SUVs which should be a good time. Thank you so much for watching, make sure to subscribe if you wanna see that, if not, we'll see you on the next one.